In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Melissa K asks us, do high-end winemakers really have people walk all over grapes with their bare feet? Perhaps no image is more synonymous with the act of winemaking than a person smashing grapes with their bare feet in order to extract the precious juices contained therein. In the grapes, not in their sweaty feet. But did winemakers ever really do this? To answer this question, that largely depends on who you ask. Today, certain winemakers, usually ones that have some sort of financial interest in it, at least publicly maintain that grape stomping was an integral part of winemaking history. However, historians tend to think that it was a relatively rare practice. To be clear, nobody is saying that ancient people didn't crush grapes with their feet to extract the juices. Rather, it is known that man has had a much more efficient alternative to this method for at least 6,000 years. We know this because in early 2011, archaeologists uncovered the remnants of an archaic winery complete with a wine press dating back to 4000 BC. This was located in Armenia. Wine itself can be traced back to at least 5400 BC, which would suggest that early man must have had a more rudimentary method of crushing grapes before somebody invented a wine press, and indeed, probably, it did involve the use of feet. This is supported by the existence of numerous pieces of artwork and other references from history illustrating people curb stomping piles of grapes while they stood in giant vats. Perhaps the most prominent pieces come from ancient Egypt, where it's largely believed that stomping grapes was a common part of winemaking, as evidenced by numerous pieces of artwork depicting exactly that. However, it's important to note that this was by no means the only step in the juice extraction process. You see, treading grapes is a remarkably inefficient method of extracting juice from them. And up until really recently in history, humans were really against wasting food. After stomping grapes, the ancient Egyptians would then put the leftovers into a large sack, at which point poles were tied to the sack's four corners, and by turning them, the rest of the grape juice was squeezed out. A thing to keep in mind is that pressing grapes is a deceptively difficult task, and the amount of pressure you use to squeeze grapes must be closely monitored to avoid accidentally releasing bitter tannins from the seeds, which can obviously negatively affect the taste of the final product. With this in mind, pressing grapes by using simple body weight seems like a good way to avoid having to apply too much pressure. However, it's just too inefficient to be used on a mass scale unless you are earning Egyptian pharaoh levels of money and had a fleet of slaves or workers to do it for you. Not surprisingly, in almost every civilization in which wine presses were used, there appears to be little evidence that they also stomped wine. They simply didn't need to, as they had a much more efficient way of doing it. An exception to this can actually be found in ancient Rome, where grape stomping was a common practice in order to extract the initial juices from the grapes, which they believed to have special properties that the rest of the juice did not. Even in this case, the Romans are still noted to have used presses to extract the bulk of the juices after this initial stomping. As for why treading grapes seems to be so synonymous with winemaking in general, despite being inefficient, unsanitary, rarely used in history, and time-consuming, that may have to do a lot with the winemaking industry itself playing it up into romanticize the old imagery of winemaking. If there's one thing the wine industry is great at, it's making wine seem grandiose when, in the end, it's just fruit juice. You know, the stuff that, with alcohol, your two-year-old drinks at $3 a gallon. I've brought this up before. We've got another video about the Judgment of Paris, which was a whole wine-tasting debacle. I'll link to that below. Beyond the mystique, there is an entire industry selling vacations where people can go and make wine the traditional way, even though it's currently illegal in America to sell wine made in this way for obvious hygienic reasons. Reasons. Indeed, it's been illegal for over a century. The whole thing is just good marketing for people who want to advertise these events and play up the fact that grape treading is supposedly a common way of making wine, even though we've been pressing grapes in a vastly more efficient way for many, many millennia. Another factor that has played into the popularity of wine treading is the now iconic 1956 episode of I Love Lucy, Lucy's Italian Adventure, which features the titular character stomping grapes in an Italian winery. The episode led to a surge in interest in the practice, despite the fact that the Californian grape farmers who supplied the grapes for the episode did so under the condition that a character would explicitly mention that grapes aren't really pressed by foot by winemakers. It should also be noted that, as alluded to, in rural Europe, where most of the imagery surrounding this practice is sourced from, 
from, the use of feet has been wholly absent from the professional winemaking process since the Middle Ages. And now for a bonus fact. During Prohibition, grape growers of the day began selling bricks of wine, which were primarily blocks of Rhine wine. These often included the following instructions. After dissolving the brick in a gallon of water, do not place the liquid in a jug away from the cupboard for 20 days, because then it would turn into wine. And I wonder what message they were really trying to get across. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Looking for something else to watch? Why not check out some videos from the archives linked to on the screen? Or check out my new channel called Highlight History. Find that linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.